All right, time for the engine bay. Got my Cisco Solutions dual battery set up, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I think it works exceptionally well. Um, I've got a 12, 24 volt switch to set all that up. Um, that's why it looks a bit funky with all the wiring on it. I've got the accessory tray underneath. Um, three solenoids in there do the 12 to 24 volt switching. Um, and it switches in to the winch. So I run the winch at 12 and 24 volt. And just while I'm looking at this here, that's where the mount for the ECU goes on the back. Um, and it fits in quite well. So I'm very proud of having that turned out. And uh, shout out to my mate Brian who uh, helped me sort it. Um, and they're for sale if you want one, let me know. All right, moving on. Stop sprucing my own products. <laughs> All right, so we've got um, a GR Delete. Um, at least bought one. Uh, that's actually a, a custom one, which isn't that hard to get. You email them, you just tell them that's what we want, they'll get it for you. Because I wanted the output, that's the boost output for uh, boost gauge. Uh, uni filter. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether Uni filter is Australian or American. I do know that I got this from an Australian supplier actually got it from quick as but either way i know they have a presence in australia um which is really good i should really do more research into that because if they are an australian company i think we should promote them a little bit better and buy australian made products uh, also in here we've got uh pwr radiator works really well it's full all aluminium um people have told me that it might be a bit of a mistake because the men are full driving them stuff I do and a bit of flex and a lot of corrugated roads and stuff um, but time will tell I don't regret putting it in at this point so we'll see what happens and I've got silicon hoses um, I think they're recovery brand and that's from uh, Overlord there's my EGT probe right there um, I mean it's kind of cool having it there getting the hotter temperatures except it's a bit hard to tell and compare it to other cars. So um, my GTs seem to get really high, like up at you know, nearly 800 degrees, um, but that's before the turbo. So I really need to get one down the bottom, probably go and see my mate Steve at Warrigal Exhaust Center, um, and we'll get another one put down the bottom. I've actually got two EGT gauges there, so I'll put one in the dump pipe and we'll have a look, compare the uh, temperatures, which will be actually kind of fun. ARB air compressor, dual compressor. It is actually an amazing bit of kit. It's just mounted on an ARB battery tray. Um, personally here, I don't think it's a good spot for a battery because it's right next to the exhaust and it'll get too hot. Um, especially now everyone's going to lithium. I really think that's just a recipe for disaster. So um, this setup, I really like it. I do actually have a third battery in the car. I'll show you what that is later. Um, and I've just had to move that... Uh, inhibitor switch over a bit uh, that's for essentially if you roll your car your engine will shut off it's an engine shut off switch and you just press a button on the top and you reset it and off you go so it stops you from um, cooking your engine oh, oh yeah and this oh, I wish I remembered the name of the brand um, this, uh, this part here this hose if you want to call it that this extension um, significantly better than the factory one um, and it's got seal supports in it around these ribbed parts. Um, the other ones, one's a factory one, it's like a material and it's just, uh, it's not very good. <laughs> so um, if you've got your snorkel um, and you go through water, it does nothing for you. Um, you end up getting, potentially getting in water in that. So this rubber one's significantly better. Um, I did get it from a Australian provider online uh, just something else I guess while I'm in here is that you can see here I've got where the, uh, the clutch would go I've got all these grommets going through the firewall my power I've got the main thermistor if you want to call it that uh, circuit breaker for self resetting one um, Jury's out on whether they're any good or not, but I haven't had a problem with them. Um, so it, that feeds the car in this box here. So I've got my 
relays in here for my um, lights and fuses. So I've got heaps of room for extra things. Um, but the main idea was to neaten it all up rather than having it just a big jumbled mess. So I've got, I think, eight core cable, that gray cable down there hidden in. So that does a lot of my switching. Um, it goes through this fuse box. Actually, one thing I wanted to show you while I'm here is this here is the map sensor. Um, manifold actual pressure or something like that. Um, so this is your boost, <laughs> essentially. So um, this sensor gets clogged up with, because um, of the EGR system, you get all, you know, your exhaust gas is coming back through here with a little bit of oil from your breather, which goes back in to your intake, into your intercooler and just feeds around. It's a recipe for disaster, really. Um, so what happens is this in here gets clogged up. Um, and then what you might find is a throttle response problem. Um, it doesn't really affect power that much. Um, it can if it gets really dirty, but essentially what it does is it can't compare the uh, ambient pressure compared to this pressure, so it measures your boost properly. And what ends up happening is you get poor throttle response. You put your foot down, and nothing happens, and then it goes. Um, a little bit similar to what happens when your map, sorry, your math sensor goes, which is this one. So when this one goes, but um, that's a little bit more noticeable when that one goes. So if your car just doesn't feel like it used to, um, then it's probably your map sensor. You just pull it out and clean it. Um, it's a proper contact cleaner to clean it. We have cleaned it with big reason heaps of times, so haven't had an issue, but um, I think the right thing would be to do is contact cleaner though. Um, so essentially what it does is there's a sensor in here on the D2A anyway. Um, so that measures your ambient temp uh, pressure and then compares it to your boost pressure in here. And then by comparing the difference, it knows you know actually what boost you were running, uh, which is actually kind of cool. Um, but it's important to keep that clean. Otherwise, like I said, you'll have poor throttle response and it just won't feel like the car you had once before. Uh, normally, it takes ages before people know this and realize it. So by the time they clean it, they think they've got a new car. So uh, just a tip worth doing.